r slash neckbeard stories by redmond detus lesson one never be nice to a neckbeard i'm very sorry if this post absolutely sucks this is my first post on reddit mayo i never thought i would have the displeasure of being able to share an experience on this sub but here we are for context i go to a school in germany similar to high school which is sectioned off into three professions it has an art part, a technology part and a social part. Personally I attend the art school section, which you can absolutely see because the art school has all the alternative people and I am some sort of mix between a Malgoth and a metalhead. Another important part to this story is that I'm an female to male trans mask guy, although I have not went through any gender affirming surgeries or hormone therapy but I did do a little vocal training to masculinize my voice a little. Most of this is pretty paraphrased and puzzled together from the voice messages I sent my online friend and my very awful memory, plus me updating this almost daily. The cast. Me. 16 years old, looking 13, 5 foot 3, pretty slim, scrawny looking and always wearing oversized band shirts. Huge anime and band nerd, I love to plaster my interests all over my stuff. I have DID, ADD and I'm on the autism spectrum. Which leads me to be very sensitive, forgetful and I get ticks from time to time. Especially when I'm nervous. Neckbeard 1719 I suppose, around 5 foot 7, very sparse neckbeard desperately hanging onto his double chin in the making, a bit overweight. Greasy mid length hair partially covered up by a fedora. His closet mainly consists of several shirts with anime women on it. Basically, the classical neckbeard. My school friends A and D. Pretty minor characters, both AFAB gender fluid people 16 and 17. My online friend, K. I text him often, especially for emotional support when something bad happens to me. I had the first two periods off but I was still way too early so I just ran around the city for a little. I just came out of a small mall, standing there and leeching off the free wifi a little more to text my online friend, K. I couldn't hear my surroundings because I was wearing headphones with outstanding noise cancelling and blasting loud music. So as I felt a sudden aggressive tap on my shoulder I shot up in surprise leading me to tick. I took off my headphones forgetting that you could still hear my music. Ah uh, hi there. I said unbelievably puzzled. Hey there. I like your Jorno keychain. I never knew girls like Joyo. I have a small keychain with a tiny plush of Giorno Giovanna hanging on my backpack. Now obviously, that statement made me happy but also crushed my soul because I got misgendered. I'm very socially awkward but it makes me very happy when people share an interest with me. Completely disregarding that very off-putting statement about the whole girl thing I answered him quite happily. Ah, thank you. I love your Dora Hedoro shirt, it's really hard to see fans of it around here. Noi is an awesome character. He wore a shirt with Noi from Dora Hedoro on it, she's a very large woman. Such a shame, isn't it? Noi is totally my waifu. I very awkwardly giggled off that statement. I did not know what to say anymore and kind of wanted to distance myself. I don't like to judge by looks but I do judge by smells and that guy smelled like he climbed out a dumping ground of old socks, Doritos and disappointment. Up, uh, I noticed all the stuff on your backpack. Except the trans pride pin, I suppose? Are you really a fan of all those bands? Cannibal Corpse, Slayer, Slipknot, Deftones, Con, Typo Negative and Ed Kennedys. Yeah, duh. I was just listening to Priest of Sodom right now. I awkwardly giggled. You get those poser comments a lot, huh? You have a superior music taste, my lady. There it was, yup. I got ma ladied. My face violently shifted to a deeply uncomfortable expression. Ahaha. Uh -huh. Thanks. I started fiddling with my fingers because I started to get more and more nervous the more he talked. Do you have Tourette's? That question was the least surprising thing that came. Germans are awfully blunt about their stigma against mental illness. No, up, uh, I'm on the autism spectrum. Ah oh well, I have ADHD. I just noticed you having a few ticks took me by surprise, at least he had one good quality. What other animes do you watch? He asked me, very excitedly staring right into my cold, dead eyes. Ah well Joyo, obviously. 
then Neon Genesis Evangelion, Cowboy Bebop, Serial Experiments Lane, Death Note and Gokka Shifudo. A lot more though, it would be way too much to list. Basically all the male manipulator anime LMAO. Whoa. You really do have a superior taste. He smiled like a little boy who just got a PlayStation for Christmas. That's. Before I could answer he screamed in excitement as he noticed my binder I carry around. You game too. This is so awesome. I have a sticker of Goro Majima dressed up as a woman on there. It's so stupid. I love it. At that time, I honestly started to like him. It was great making someone this genuinely happy just with my interests. What other games do you play? He asked almost not being able to contain his excitement. Well. Honestly pretty basic stuff. Yakuza, Final Fantasy XV, Grand Theft Auto V and Sally Face. I used to be really into Five Nights at Freddy's and Undertale when I was younger. His eyes sparkled from excitement. Oh this is so awesome. You're totally like a tomboy. What? That statement threw me off again, so I glared down at my phone. Oh man. Well it was super fun talking to you, but I gotta start heading to school. What school do you go to he asked me, sounding a little disappointed about the sudden supposed end to our conversation. Oh, I go to, insert art school. Oh that's great, we can totally walk there together. I got to the same school, but the technology part. Ah. Great. While I at first thought he was nice and was that one neck beard that really ran against the standard, during the around 20 minute walk from the mall to our school, he made more and more off-putting comments. I started occupying myself a little by texting K for help during the walk, telling him it was my mum. When we arrived at the school it was around the last 5 minutes of our first break so my friends were waiting for me on the schoolyard. Well, I had a lot of fun talking to you, maybe we'll see each other again. I said waving him goodbye and going over to my friends. I thought that was it and it was just a rather odd encounter with someone. Boy was I wrong. Me and my friends barely ever spend our break on the schoolyards, unless A wants to go for a smoke. We have a small break room in the main building that no one is ever at, so we usually spend our breaks there. We were sitting there, eating our lunch and talking about our OC storylines as I heard it. Ah. There you are, I've been looking for you everywhere. Hi to the other girls too. I harshly tuned my head as I heard his nasal voice holler through the room. Oh lord, what have I gotten myself into with that guy? Just who is that? D quietly whispered to me. I just gave them an uncomfortable smile which was a very clear sign to them. Ah. Hi. I said rather tired. Not only did a lot of his comments throw me off but I also could not manage to match his energy at all. Can I sit with you guys? Sure. I replied, before anyone else could. A is way too nice and even more naive than I am. He put his Red Bull and an energy he got from the mall on the table and forced himself in between me and D. D gave me a very confused look and I just uncomfortably shrugged them off, as a sign for I'll tell you later. We are really good with non-verbal communication as my autism sometimes includes non-verbalism. Whoa do you draw? He said as he noticed my sketchbook. Ah yeah we all do. He quickly grabbed my sketchbook, not asking me for permission at all, and started flipping through the pages. That made me really uncomfortable. I hate it when people look through my things without my permission because I feel like I always have to explain myself. A good 5 minutes later of awkward silence, him flipping through my sketchbook and typing something on his phone and A&D seeming really confused, he spoke up again. Whoa man, your art is awesome. Can you draw one of my wafers for me sometime? Absolutely not. Although I said sure, because I can't say no and I was hoping he would just forget. As the school day ended and I was on the train home texting K again, I got a text from a number I didn't have saved to my contacts. The only thing I saw from the message preview was a hi there. I was prepared for it to be one of my classmates or my cousin who lost her phone for the fourth time this month, but nope, it was neckbeard. Turns out that guy had an insane memory. In my sketchbook I have a very small section with one of these if lost please return to my phone number. Because I'm really anxious about losing my work since it was really important to me. Turns out, what he typed down was my phone number. 
That was creepy as hell. Hi there. I saw your phone number in your sketchbook and I thought having your number was the best way to contact you since we only see each other twice a week. In the first year you have two days of school and three days of an internship. I'm gonna send you some photos of my wafers since you promised to draw them. Attached were a bunch of scantily clad anime girls who all look suspiciously young. You, weird. Well damn, that was unbelievably uncomfortable and now I'm screwed with this guy having my number. He texted me daily, with very sparse answers from me and bothered us every break. Until around 4 weeks later of our friendship he suddenly decided I was his partner now. Yup. I came out to him as trans but he said I was just a confused tomboy, although he does call me by my proper name because he doesn't know my dead name. Since I was in his phone contacts now, he found my personal Instagram account. I looked at his profile because I didn't know who the account belonged to. His most recent post was a very large chested anime girl with a similar haircut to me captioned reminded me of my girlfriend. Huh. What now? A few pictures of scantily clad anime girls further down was the sketch of his waifu I did for him. Which was Froppy from Boku no Hero Academia. So now it was very certain that his was him. God damn. What have I gotten myself into? That whole deal led to pretty much a personality shift. Which I was not very aware of. After seeing that I got less comfortable being around him. One morning I was sitting in the break room alone, eating my lunch and drawing. Minding my own business, you know? I didn't notice Neckbeard coming from the hall and sitting down next to me which surprised me. Why does he always have to be so sneaky anyway? Hi there OP. He put his arms around me. Absolutely not. I duck out of his firm grasp unfortunately having to armpit switch was near fatal to my health. What the hell was that for? I pretty much lost it at that point with him. What am I not allowed to show my appreciation to such a lovely girl? Neckbeard, stop. I've also told you I'm not a girl. He seemed surprised by my change of tone. What's up with you? Did you have a bad morning? I glared at him. Not until now. Whoa what was that about? He scooted away from me a little. Man, stop acting like you don't know what you were talking about. I saw your Instagram, what makes you think I'm your damn partner? He got very shy, very quickly but tried to mask it with confidence. Well, you're obviously being super close to me, I thought you were just too shy to admit you've got a crush on me. Dude, what the hell? No, no no you've got this mad messed up. Just because I was nice to your sorry ass doesn't mean anything whatsoever. Are this entitled? I tried to be as nice to him as I could, resisting the urge to mull his very punchable face. A guy thought you were different. I was being nice, giving you a chance with me. I wanted to look out for your shyness and make the first move, but it turns out all women are the same, even when they have cooler interests. I'm so tired of being the nice guy. I absolutely had it now. The audacity that this guy has was so far beyond me that I couldn't even start to comprehend. Without even thinking about it, I punched him in the nose, got up and left. Admittedly, that was a super childish move and I should have just left without doing that, but my patience is limited. Apparently he told a teacher, but I explained the whole situation and got away with a slap on the wrist. Never again, my god. TLDR. Neckbeard thinks me being nice to him and sharing interests with him means I want to be his partner. <laughs> That's all folks. Thank you for watching. Have a nice evening.